Okay, I'm on my way to see my local discus breeder, breeds Martin Ng, 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 not entirely sure how you say it, but I've got my box. I recently won a competition on his website, so I've got £100 credit to spend on some discus. So, let's go and have a look round. Tim from Cordon Discus, a good friend Hello. Tim. Hello. Um, I'm here because I won a competition on your Facebook group, so I'm going to try and pick up some fish later. But I wanted to have a quick show around your fish room. So tell us about it. What what have we got here? How many tanks have we got, for instance? Well, there's 27 tanks in here. On there's four different systems, about a thousand liters apiece. Um, different strains in different tanks. I try to keep all the same strains in the same tanks. We have automatic water changes with HMA filtered, dechlorinated and heated right. tap water. So we do four very small water changes a day. So Is that a manual water change? It's all automatic. Yeah. I don't have to be here. For the water changes, uh, how do you, how is it, what do you do? Okay, so I have a hot and cold water supply connected to a uh, TRV3 thermostatic valve, yeah. same sort of thing that you use in all the people's homes so they don't get burnt, set at 30 degrees. That water then goes through to my 20 inch jumbo HMA filter, then goes through to a host pipe timer, which then is split and fed each individually, individually and then to each, each system. Each tank just overflows. Each tank is fed and then the excess water is overflowed. Ah, so it's like a big boy version of what I've got in my Indeed. little fish. Is that yeah. where I got the idea from? Yeah. Yeah. from yeah. <laughs> so, on what are we talking in terms of value of all the fish in this room? Under normal circumstances, there's a few th there's a few thousand pounds, a few tens of thousand pounds, thousands of fish in here. Um, um, stock levels go up and down depending on when we take deliveries from Martin, but you yeah. know, at the moment there's a few tens of thousands. Of thousands. So you mentioned Martin, yes? Yeah? These are all Martin Ng or Ng, and we're well, not quite sure. We call him Martin because we can't really decide <laughs> how to pronounce his name because there's not really a pronunciation for NG. <laughs> So it's Martin NG or Martin Unger. We don't really know, so we just call him Martin. Fair enough. And all these fish are Martin fish? Yeah, I don't breed anymore. Um, every single fish in here that is a discus is actually bred by the master breeder himself, Martin. And you were saying that this is quite a low stock because of the summer lull yeah. and... Summer lull, holidays. I'm fortunate enough to go uh, to see Martin in a couple of weeks. I'm going up to... Um, Pick my colleague up, Steve, who's Steve Gilliatt doing discus, and we're both flying out to see Martin to go over to Kuala Lumpur in a couple so, of weeks' time. So, very I shall, exciting. I shall put a link to Tim's YouTube channel, the Corbin Discus YouTube channel, and then when he gets all these new fish in, you can have a look at them. Some of them are stunning, and I'll, I'll show you some of them as we go around. Do you sell just discus, or do you sell some of the other things? 99% of what I, I sell are, 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 are fish from Martin. Um, I do have a dabble with L numbers mainly bristle nose that I breed here just to keep my, my tanks clean all of my tanks I don't put my hands in the bristle nose do that for me um, I suppose I'm a little bit lazy that I let them do it for me um, I've currently it's breeding part some... of the automation surely absolutely yeah. why make it difficult um, I breed some 201s um, I've, got, I've got a few dozen babies from those at the moment which I'm just having a breed with and I've also got some L333s which are um, not bred by myself, bred by one of my fish customers, um, which we're going on to have a go breeding with those a little bit later on as well. Very good. So, tell me a little bit about your fishy history. How did you get into this and how have you ended up with the fish room and all these wonderful discos? It's, it's quite a nice story, I suppose. I was brought up with a fish tank all my life. My, my father was big into aquariums and tropicals mainly. 
um, ponds and that sort of thing. And a few years ago, I walked into a, a well-known chain store, a, a aquatic store, and there was a, a chap there at the queue, at the front of the queue, pleading with the manager saying, I've lost my job, please buy them. So me just being nosy, was having a bit of a listen, and I ended up with a pair of discus from this guy just up the road, and that led to a breeding some fish, and that filled my office in the house very quickly. I then built a fish room in my back garden, which we filled very, very quickly. Then I sold my sports car that was in here, which is my garage, and converted this to this fish room that you see today. So I've been keeping discus for about 15 years. Um, I've been selling them for much less than that, probably 10 years, eight years yeah. now. Um, but I just love discus. That's, I just really, really enjoy them. And this is the guy that I credit with selling me my first proper discus. So I'll tell you that story one day as well. So for the new discus keeper, do they deserve their reputation as difficult, pernickety, problem causing? I get questions almost on a daily basis about, I'm interested in discus, but everyone tells me they're too difficult. You need to do 100% water changes every day. You need to do uh, RO water, the, all these things. What, what's your okay. take as someone that sells them? To the, the most, the most controversial part of discus keeping is the internet. There yeah. are so many experts out there, keyboard warriors, whatever you want to call them, that are uneducated, and unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there selling poor quality discus and fish that really should not be around. Um, my suggestion initially, or my my first point, would be always buy from a specialist. Um, a lot of shops sell discus, not necessarily the right way to do it. If you find a specialist that you know, ideally local to yourself, one that you can trust and you can ask questions, that's the first starting point. They're not hard to keep. Look at them properly, give them the correct water parameters, give them good quality food, check your water, make sure you're following certain basic rules on your water parameters, they are not difficult at all. What, I mean, I was going to ask about what would your top five tips be for someone that they've kept fish maybe, but they've never kept this, okay. and they've always been put off. A lot of my customers are first time discus keepers, and I, I really relish them coming around here, and I encourage anyone to come here and look, see, learn, watch what I do, take notes, and the, the, the first thing is build a reputation with someone that sells quality products, quality discus, have a look at the tank, watch them being fed, just have a look at them and see how they behave. Are they huddled in a corner, dark and skinny, or are they coming up for food? Are they are they literally interested in, in, in coming up to see you, like these are here? Okay, that's the first thing. Make sure that you've got the correct equipment, make sure you've got decent filtration, make sure you've got decent dechlorination, Make sure you've got the right food. And those little simple rules will not be a problem. And also, as important as everything else, make sure you've got the backup and after support if you do have a hiccup. So, we talked about these being Martin Ng or Ung fish. What was it that led you to choose that? Or what? Tell me a bit about Martin. How, okay. People that don't know of him or haven't it's heard a, of him. It's a great question. There are very many very good discus breeders in the world, whether they be in Asia, whether they be in Europe, whether they be any part of the world. We came across Martin, I suppose semi-accidentally, doing some research, and we saw the quality of his fish. That was the first thing. Martin is a very well-renowned discus judge, so he knows what he's looking for. So in his breeding, he can look and see what he wants and what he's looking for. He's an author. He's, in my opinion, one of the world's best breeders. So I see it as an absolute privilege that I have Martin's fish in my fish room and I'm allowed to share it and sell them to people that want to have them. Yeah, so you're one of two people at the moment that sell these At the fish? moment, there's, there's, yeah. three, there's three people yeah. in the UK. There's a shop in the, on the Ch Channel Islands, uh, there's myself here at Club and Discus, and there's my good friend Steve Gilly at Club and Discus.